we want to convert the following fractions to decimals. Remember, a fraction bar means division. So to convert one-third to a decimal, we would divide one by three in long division form. And now if we put a decimal point after the one here on the right and move it up into the quotient, we can add zeros to the right of the decimal point without changing the value of one, and now we can divide for as long as we need to until the decimal terminates or repeats with the pattern. So notice that there are no threes in one, but if we put a zero here, we can ask how many threes are there in 10? Well, there are three threes in 10. Three times three is equal to nine, and we subtract. This difference is one, and since this difference isn't zero, we have to keep adding zeros until it terminates or repeats with the pattern. So we can add another zero here, bring it down. So now we have 10, and now we ask the same question. How many threes are there in 10? Well, that would be three. Three times three is nine. We subtract. Notice how we get another one. So if we add another zero and bring it down, we have the same question over and over again. How many threes are there in 10? Well, again, that's three. Three times three is nine, we subtract. And hopefully you can see the pattern here. This three is gonna continue or repeat forever. So this decimal is repeating. So therefore, one third is equal to 0 0.3. And to show this three repeats, we put a bar over the three. We don't ever wanna round this because if we round it, we're actually changing the value and therefore it's not equal to one third. For the second example, we have five twelfths which means five divided by 12. So if we have five divided by 12, again, we can put our decimal point to the right of five, move it up into the quotient, and now we can add zeros to the right as needed. Notice there aren't any 12s in five, so we add a zero here, and now we ask how many 12s are there in 50? Well, that would be four, because four times 12 is 48, now we subtract, this is two, add another zero and bring it down. So now we have 20. Now we wanna ask how many 12s there are in 20, that would be one. One times 12 is 12. This difference is eight. Add another zero and bring it down, now we have 80. So now we wanna know how many 12s there are in 80. That's gonna be six. Six times 12 is 72. Subtract, this would be eight. Add another zero and bring it down. So now we have 80 again. How many 12s in 80? Well, we just asked that, that was six. Six times 12 is 72, subtract. We have another difference of eight. Add another zero and bring it down. And now we should notice something. We wanna know how many 12s are on 80. Well, this is the third time we asked that question. That would be another six. So what we should notice here is that six is going to repeat. So five twelfths as a decimal is equal to 0 0.416. And because only the six is repeating, we put the bar only over the six. If we put it over the one or the four, that would mean that those digits are also repeating and they're not, it's only the six. And while we're here, let's go ahead and check these on the calculator. So what we'll do is just perform the division. So for the first example, we have one divided by three, which verifies our decimal. Notice how the calculator doesn't have a way to represent repeating decimals correctly. It just shows a certain number of digits. And then we have five divided by 12. And notice in this example, this last digit here is a seven. The calculator is actually rounding this decimal, which means it's not exactly equal to five twelfths, but the way that we did it, it is. So you don't wanna round your decimals when converting fractions to decimals. Okay, that's going to do it. I hope this was helpful.